All right, here we are about to confront Dr. Mobius. I'm loaded. confusion so hard to tell these days uh, you seem familiar somehow I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain perhaps it's just up there uh, such a nice brain young very bright a uh, little hard to see you uh, can you walk into my left uh, right FOV coon ah that's it you're coming into focus nicely yeah. Depth perception is a problem with this old monitor of mine. Went black a while ago. <laughs> That's old age for you. Mm. Should look at getting the visual nerves reattached. It's just that the right eye would see the wrong things. <laughs> the flying tortoises ooh, were the worst. Would you care for a mentat? I love Mentats. Delicious <laughs> and smarty. I have all sorts of amazingly science-horrific thoughts and ideas when those chalky tablets are zipping through my bio-gel. I forget them all not long after, though. Especially with the data constipating my memory core. Afraid binary streams might shoot out my chassis. Had to start using the dome floor and walls here to inscribe equations. Although I've somewhat lost track of where they start and end. Hmm. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. Oh, a variety of raisins. You're something of a homily. The uh, anomaly? You're, you're really quite special, and not in the cranially challenged way. You see, you are the most successful brain extraction experiment ever performed here at Big Mountain. A victim of your own success, as it were. If you were to go back with what your brain knows about the procedure, well, your brain could be popped back in and you could walk right out of here. Can't have brains moving around of their own volition. Now, that seems to be rather hormonal of you. Flight or fight response, you know. Hard to cut that out completely. Your brain is here, safe with me. We chat over mentats. Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. It's quite independent, has all manner of opinions. Tell you what, I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. Hmm. Oh, curiosity. I experienced that less now that I know everything. Oh, maybe it was when I found out some unpleasant answers. Mm hmm. The ghosts aren't real? That changes everything! Why, I can save my computing power for other perceptual impossibilities. Please be my guest. Uh, the receptor is there. And the side-switching wobbly-bob? Uh, just turn that. Good. Good. Better. Oh. Oh, yes. That feels wonderful. 
this is even better than my afternoon Mentats break. Well, every scientist needs an army. Mine came to me after these rather large scorpions kept coming in from the dessert, <laughs> like poisonous frosting. How scary, I thought. But they have survived when nothing else had. Perfect candidates for improvement as a reward for their tenacity. Then I thought, what if they shot energy bolts, and acted as walking eyes, and data-drained computers, and acted as bullhorns? Then I made them bigger. Then I thought about custard. I do so love custard. Or oh, was it mustard? Mustard custard. Mm, I miss sugars and salts. Hmm. Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, goodbye. Uh, please mind the equations on the floor. Hmm. All right. Let's find my brain. I think that's it right there. And we're going to start another conversation with it. Well, well, look who finally dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been? Hmm? Crawling through pits Bam. of radioactive... I hate to think that's what my real voice sounds like. <laughs> ah, lovely. Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? Uh. Yes, well, believe me, the opposite is equally true. Good lord, have you bathed at all since they pulled me out of you? Well, I see sarcasm hasn't eluded you. Fine, perhaps now isn't the best time, but it's the principle of the thing. Oh, had I? What exactly will you do if I don't? Not put me back <laughs> in that cranial dungeon you call your head? Heavens forbid. By all means, if the idea of spending the rest of your days as a true lobotomite appeals to you. Actually, come to think of it, you probably wouldn't mind that, would you? Uh... After the think tank extracted me from your skull, they fell to bickering amongst themselves. I'm sad to say we were quite forgotten about. Dr. Mobius saw an opportunity to gain some leverage and had me spirited away to his dome. I don't know. I'm afraid the trauma of our separation rendered me quite insensate. I didn't come around until I was safely ensconced in this tank. I'm quite sure whatever he did was highly scientific, though. Okay. Hardly. Dr. Mobius keeps a close optical sensor on the goings-on at the think tank. As soon as he saw the opportunity, he took it. Well... As long as your curiosity is satisfied. Ah, lovely. Figure All right, what do out, I need? Have we? Would you like a... Well, that's a fine how do you do. Me. A, quote, dick, unquote. As if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge. And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoyed that little moment? I most certainly am not. I'm the seat of all reason and logic in our little partnership. All those feelings that motivate you, that sense of righteousness and that rush you get when you help someone, do you know where those come from? Glands. They come from glands. 
free of the tyranny of your ape-like and primitive endocrine system, I can see how foolish your motives are. I... Well... Look, it's all a very complex system of biofeedback <laughs> and other things I wouldn't expect you to understand. Okay. Oh, alright. Perhaps I am, but at least I'm logical about it. I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look, all right, from my come on. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well, barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, grisly injuries, and biological functions. Do you know how much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? It's quite a lot, I can tell you. Overrated biological feedback. Believe me, you only <laughs> feel that way because you've got all that meat oozing hormones. Alright. Feel this way because you're lacking those hormones. Hmm. I suppose you're right. That does call certain assumptions into question, doesn't it? Uh, if we're at an impasse, you can't feel what I feel and I can't think the way you think. All right, let's do this one. Indeed, quite the conundrum. How do you suppose we resolve it? I think we have to trust each other. And... I suppose there might be some advantage to that, yes. There's a chance that the reintegration would create some improved synergy between us. Well, I suppose you've convinced me well enough. I'll rejoin your body if that's your final decision. Unfortunately, before we get to that stage of the proceedings, we have a problem. Even if I could settle myself back in your skull and reconnect all those pesky nerve endings, Dr. Mobius doesn't have the tools here. Okay, we I knew that. Of Dr. Klein's lab, and I rather doubt the brains are inclined to share. And you believe them? Really? I know you were recently deprived of my <laughs> fabulous advice, but... Really? Really? Once I'm delivered into their clutches, they'll find a way past the radar fence and the whole Mojave will be their playground. And that is assuming, of course, that one of them doesn't take a fancy to our body and decide to slip his own brain into it instead. Okay. You're part of me. Well... I suppose I do miss those endorphin rides uh, when we save the day. Just, uh... Alright, what's the plan? Yep. <laughs> uh, if the think tank will hold up the bargain, we'll make them. Let's go. I'll handle the brains. Right. Look out, think tank. This brain is coming out of its jar. I suppose now that we're reunited, you want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts the Think Tank took from us. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sync's Autodoc can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go. Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited. Ah, oh, boy. Um... Guns is already a hundred. I think I want to spread them out this time. All right. Now the question is, can we get out of here? Oh, I see you and your brain reached a compromise. How pleasant. 
I hypothesized after the indignant frequencies my receptors had uh, recepted, such a partnership-based conclusion would be low on the likely scale. Okay. Um. Indeed. The uh, goodbye part of... All right. We did that already. All right. Can I get out of here? Do I remember how to get... Oh, there it is. Haha. <laughs> All right. travel from here <laughs> so many questions so little answers the sink balcony why is it asking me to travel there some additional services let's see and rightly so I should think all right then let me just fire up the old interface for you I hope it's not uh. all right let's go Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it here, just in case. Then, all right. That's why I did the save. Oh, look at this. The lobotomite returns. Our lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hoped? Okay. I recommend watching your tone with me, lobotomite. Now, your brain. Hand it over, or we'll extract it again. Hmm. And what could we possibly have to speak about? You have the brain, we have the technology. All you must do is surrender. With it, we can finally leave this place. I cannot tell you how boring this place gets, chopping up the landscape and everything Blah, 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 blah. And we have so many questions to ask your brain first. About this Mojave place. A fertile testing ground for our experiments. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. There's no way Mobius would condescend to step inside you. Besides, there's no way such a thing could be accomplished. It's impossible. Dang. I wish I knew that. I'd raise that. A fight? I, I've never been in a fight. What, uh, what, what, what do I... Ah, colleagues! Think tank! Alert! Alert! We are under attack! This one looks pretty tough. Does this weapon have soft lock? Thank <laughs> you. 
of hostilities complete yeah but do I not have to let me see here What does my map say? Huh. Well, I thought I needed them. As it had been in the years before oh. the Great War, All right. the mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others, which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The courier had scoured much of the big empty, although secrets still remained in the crater's depths. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. My problem is I'm not sure if I got my the brain back in my head. bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still... This all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. Hmm. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip. And the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. <laughs> Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until oh, the day on. someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. The scene continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the magnetohydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. <laughs> the toaster continued its psychotic spree, reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. <laughs> Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy, except he found it peaceful there 
tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Dio Jefferson eventually discovered a new sound. Silence. It only made him more filled with the blues than before. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Auto Doc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Auto Doc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre or bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 continued to scan for the subject and the stealth suit prototype long after the test was over. Frustrated, and unable to find its lost technology, X-13 expanded its network of laser tripwires, sensors, and robo-brains out across Big Mountain. This glittering blue light beam forest cleanly bisected anything that entered its depths, slicing them into small segmented parts for easy disposal. The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when mm. left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. The think tank basement, filled with the lobotomized robotical frames of the doctors, now served as a graveyard. The monitors had recorded the battle in its entirety, including the think tank's final shrill, terrified screams, whimpers, and pleas for mercy. They broadcast these humiliating last moments as a warning to anyone approaching the perimeter that other smarty pants were not welcome. The courier was the inheritor of the big empty, and there was room for only one will in the halls of the think tank dome. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past they can't see the present much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, Science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope. And hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the Big Empty speak for themselves. 
Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the big empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return. Shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one row yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. Thank you. You've lost the brainless. Okay. And this is mean. Your head still cannot be crippled, but you're only 10% more. Okay. Big mountain trans. Okay, so I can come back. Okay. Wow. Okay, what does it come under? Weapons? <coughs> All right, I think, uh, says I have to equip it. But I don't see it. Alright. I think what I'm going to do is we've already ran a long time on this video. So I'm going to end it here before I head back to the Mojave. So this is going to be the end of uh, Old World Blues. And we'll continue back on the main game, New Vegas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.